Hi everybody and welcome to another piano comparison here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison. Today we are going to be comparing Yamaha's YDP 184 against Roland's HP 702. These are instruments that are in the $2,500 to $3,000 range depending on what country and currency you are buying your instruments in. They compare very well on a number of fronts, not least of which is they're both really enjoyable to play. So we're going to be going through their features, we're talking about their action, and of course comparing the sound, both the output from the headphones as well as their speakers. If it's the first time that you have found us here on the channel, we would love for you to hit that subscribe and notification bell because we'd love you to come back. Check out more videos, become part of our participating crowd of commenters, that's always awesome, uh, and just generally uh, enjoy the world of pianos along with us. So without further ado, let's jump right in with today's comparison of the YDP 184 and the HP 702 right away. So this is a comparison I've wanted to do for a while. Um, there aren't many options in the piano business when it comes to this specific price point. When we're shopping for TVs, there are 10 different ones to choose from. When we're shopping for dishwashers, there's 20 to choose from. There are abundance of options at pretty well every consumer price point in any industry you go to. But when it comes to digital pianos and you get up into the 3000 and above range uh, for these models, you find that the selection leans out very quickly and you're often left looking at two, maybe a maximum of three models. Not like three models that you've narrowed it down to, like three models period. Uh, at a specific price point from any of the particular manufacturers. Kawhi might have one, Roland might have one, uh, Casio in a few instances is going to have uh, you know, something comparable maybe from the AP line. Uh, and then of course you've got the you know, Yamaha and Roland stuff. Um, so the YDP 184 and the HP 702, which is what we are comparing today, uh, are two of those uh, of those options. Um, if we're talking, you know, in the American market, we're in the sort of the $2,500 range. In the Canadian or Australian market, we might be talking uh, closer to say the $32 to $3,500 range. Um, and these are uh, really competing for the same customer. And to me, the customer that these are going after would be uh, individuals who are investing in an instrument for home use. Um, they are uh, likely to be uh, probably adult players, is my guess. Uh, they don't want a basic instrument. They want something with a fuller sound. They want something with a more complex tone. They don't play well enough in their minds to justify going with something like a full hybrid. Um, but they want the convenience of a digital piano. And so the HP 702-704 line really fits that very well. And I would say the Yamaha, the, the YDP 184, which really honestly is just uh, a, a rebranded CLP uh, piano from uh, the, like the 725, 735, 745, that whole uh, series. And so with instruments like this, we're gonna have 
a set of features that are quite similar, and then we're gonna have sets of features which really diverge quite a bit. And that's what allows you as a customer to make the choice. Um, because although they're at a similar price point, although the cabinets look pretty similar, they really are quite a different experience. Now, like all of our digital piano reviews, we're gonna compare first the sound, then we're going to compare touch, and finally we're gonna compare other features. We are taking line outs of both of these instruments. We are also going to be recording them uh, with microphones because to a lot of people at this price point, the speaker performance and the nature of the speaker becomes quite relevant. Of course, there's always gonna be arguments on how best to mic a digital piano so that it represents appropriately and relevantly uh, to an end user. We're gonna do our best. One thing I will promise is that it will be exactly the same positioning and approach uh, with both of these instruments. So let's start first with the sound description and, and just some playing on the Roland. We'll go back and do the same thing on the Yamaha. So a big tonal difference between Roland's and Yamaha's generally is the sample that they choose to work with. Now, Roland on its piano has actually moved to full modeling, which means that's an entirely synthesized sound. But prior to them releasing that, they've always kind of hewed towards a, a New York Steinway tone. It has more of a mid-range presence than either Yamaha or Kawai use for their samples. Of course, Yamaha on this one is sampling their CFX Grand. Um, if we were comparing this to a Kawai, we'd be uh, comparing it to an SKEX uh, Concert Grand uh, sample. Um, Roland never explicitly comes out and says that, yes, we're, we're sort of going for more of an American uh, you know, Concert Grand sound, but it's so obvious that that's what they're doing. The character of the tone is just got a lot uh, more uh, bloom to its mid-range. It's more, the, the mid-range is a lot more present.
upper end too is modeled definitely after that Steinway-esque uh, top end. There's this really interesting blend of a harmonic content and enharmonic content. Um, there's sort of this extra shimmer on the top. And then the third aspect about the tone that I really want to um, point out is just how dynamic uh, not the volume is, which it definitely is, um, but the timbre of the sound as you move from a pianissimo range up through a forte range is, is really particularly vivid. Now, that's the piano sound. Uh, when you're in the piano sound, you have the option to go into Piano Designer. This is very similar to a feature that we're going to talk about on a Yamaha. Uh, and inside the Piano Designer, you can go through and adjust a wide variety of um, variables. So we have key touch, we have ambience, 3D headphone ambience, uh, the brilliance, master tuning, temperament, hammer response. Um, and then you can go even further down the rabbit hole and go into Piano Tone Edit, where you've got lid, key off noise, hammer noise, duplex scale, string resonance, damper resonance, key off resonance, cabinet resonance, soundboard type, damper noise, and then you can even get into single note and single volume and single character adjustment per note. Um, so it's really a very intensive, um, uh, quite uh, all-encompassing editing suite that you have for the sound. And a lot of the reason you have that ability um, is that you've got this direct modeling. Modeling being, of course, um, a completely synthesized tone, uh, entirely computer generated. Yeah, the best parallel to, uh, to this outside of the piano world would be, say, Piano Tech, which is a maker of a VST. And actually, just by pure search volume online, the most popular VST, if uh, sales have matched uh, the level of search intent and search volume, uh, like in search engines like Google. Uh, and so with something like that, you really do have maximum control. Now there's always the argument that the imperfections um, of both the room and the idiosyncrasies and the specific characters of both pianos and the rooms are maybe better picked up with sampling. Um, but there is the argument uh, to be had about control uh, and really giving a huge level of detail and customization um, because uh, you've got uh, basically your, your hands on all the levers uh, of that algorithm. So that's what Roland brings on its acoustic piano. And with that comes unlimited polyphony as well. Uh, when we move into um, sounds like the 1976 suitcase, which is like an e-piano, now we're out of the modeling and we're into their Supernatural engine, which is a combination of sampling as well as some, some, some synthesis on top.
and then there are a number of options when it comes to the suitcase. Uh, Uh, and then once you get into other, that's where the number of sounds actually gets right up into the 300s because it includes the General MIDI 2 sound bank. Um, so a great selection of acoustic pianos, e-pianos, pad strings, uh, and then really everything under the sun when it gets into other. But the core uh, focus clearly here is pianos, e-pianos, and string slash pads. Let's flip over to the Yamaha and listen to what they have to offer. So this is the default setting for their CFX Grand. So with a sound like this, I'm getting much more of a V curve, um, which, is, which is actually quite similar to what you get in real life. More pronounced upper harmonics, that's kind of what gives Yamaha that characteristic brighter sound that a lot of people often describe. Also more of lower mid, I wouldn't describe it as more low lows, just lower mids, a little more pronounced, and then you've got your highs that are a little more pronounced, whereas on the Roland you kind of have your mids and upper mids which um, are, are, are a little more forward. So a good amount of, of tonal variation as well. But not as big of a dynamic uh, response. Wow. So both set to the same volumes and without the use of the of the pedal it's definitely easier to get an even lower uh, dynamic uh, level controlled on the Roland. Which is actually something that 
Roland used to not be that well known for. In fact, if you go back five, six years ago, one of the things that I would often uh, comment on, complain is too strong a word, but comment on, was that the Kawais always had a better dynamic response and that the Rolands tend to have this uh, sense of compression uh, to, the, to the sound. Um, they have worked on this and, and they've been uh, vocal about this. They've talked about the fact that they've worked on the, the uh, touch, you know, the response curve and, and widening that dynamic response. Um, so in this particular case, it's the Yamaha that's feeling a little bit squished. color and tonal variety out of the Yamaha. Uh, now they're using um, something that would be closer to say the Supernatural engine. They're using a, a sample base off the CFX and then they're adding some other resonance engines um, and other kind of sampling, additive sampling stuff on top of there. And so, you know, we had Piano Designer over here. In this particular, uh, on the Yamaha, we've got what's called Piano Room, and that gives a very similar t uh, level of editing capability. So you've got lid position, brightness, touch, reverb, reverb depth, tuning. Uh, you've got the virtual resonance uh, with the damper, strings, aliquot, and body key off sample and the half pedal. So um, I think those are uh, fewer editable functions, but not by like a meaningful, unless you're really, really, really geeking out. Both of these instruments gives you uh, a, a pretty good ability uh, to come up with the sound and the experience that you're looking for. Um, this also, just like uh, the Roland, has a lot more than just the acoustic sound. So let's just have a listen. Uh, to some of those other options. So we've already heard uh, the main uh, CFX grand. Here's the pop grand. key. The right key. Uh, then we've got Jazz Grand. Rock Grand. And then Honky Tonk. And then you get into the E-Pianos. DX sound. Yeah, so you've got uh, quite a few sounds here that do line up reasonably well with one another.
yeah, hard to find exact parallels between all of those. Uh, so a good selection of the e-piano, uh, and then you've got uh, organ. So three organs, um, whereas over here we've got So they may have uh, similar categories, but the Roland in, in, in a lot of those categories just has a huge uh, increase in the number of options. Um, organ, definitely, uh, we've got more. E-piano, we've definitely got more. Although on the Yamaha, there's two or three in there that have uh, just great high quality. I loved that uh, church pipe organ, for example, um, and the Yamaha DX sounds is always killer. Uh, they they really generally do those uh, the best on the Roland side. Their E piano sounds are great, and of course with the acoustic stuff, it's really um, as most things a matter of taste. So no conversation about sound would be complete at this price point without a conversation about the speakers. Uh, and so as you can see, just for this section, we've moved speakers in. We've got them placed uh, right at uh, ear level uh, to try and get uh, as close to what I'm hearing as possible uh, out, of these, out of these pianos. Now on paper, one of the biggest differences really uh, is that the Yamaha has a pair of 30 watt speakers, whereas the Roland has a pair of 16 watt speakers. This suggests that the Yamaha should just uh, obliterate uh, the Roland when it comes to just sheer power. Um, in practice, however, uh, it would seem that Roland's focus on uh, you know, building actual cabinet resonance um, principles into the design of the instrument as well as the placement of that speaker uh, makes a huge difference and the effect of which is that there's really no difference at all uh, in the effective output of sound between these two pianos. I've got both of these set to about 75%. There's no other adjustment that's been made and here's what we get out of the Yamaha. over to the Roland.
Now both of these sets of speakers are down facing, but Roland makes a big deal about the various reflective surfaces uh, that they build into the into sort of the speaker enclosures inside. Uh, and I've actually spoken to people who have knowledge of uh, speaker design and acoustic considerations as well as people who repair these instruments and I can tell you that when you open up some of these Rolands um, the care that has gone into uh, the placement and the construction uh, and the design of the speakers and other components uh, are is often um, in a different league than what you find out of the other uh, out of other suppliers they really uh, do get quite fanatical about that stuff. So having said that, even though they're both down facing, the level of upper mid-range detail that you get out of the Roland is substantially So two very different sounds being presented out of these speakers, um, and d depending on just your uh, your preference, nothing more than that, you may be inclined towards the Yamaha uh, that has uh, like just a little bit of uh, the high end there coming out of the speakers. Uh, certainly enough that you get some of that high end detail around your 10k, 12k, uh, and a nice warm tone down in your sort of like, let's call it like your 500 hertz and, and below, uh, nice presentation there. Or you might prefer the Roland where you're dealing with quite a bit more detail and just content uh, up it through your 1K, 2K, 4K, 5K, all, all the way through, through that range is definitely more prominent uh, on the Roland. So um, besides that, all I would say about the speaker thing is don't let that wattage rating scare you off uh, one way or another. Don't be thinking that either the Yamaha is too powerful or that the Roland doesn't have enough power. Side by side in exactly the same room, uh, it's quite surprising um, how much uh, these two instruments really present quite similarly in terms of just the overall dynamic output. We are going to be right back with a discussion on the action. Thank you so much for being with us and we'll see you in just a second. Now the touch between these two instruments is quite different. Um, even on paper, it's gonna be quite different. We've got um, an action with escapement versus an action uh, with no escapement. Um, now, there's gonna be a huge number of people who say, well, that is fine with me because I don't even know what escapement is, or why are we simulating something uh, that really is kind of a mechanical oddity of an acoustic piano anyway. Um, and that's a long-standing argument within the digital piano world uh, as it is. I mean, manufacturers argue about this stuff all day long. This is what I found when it comes to uh, pianos with escapement versus without. If you are a real finesse player, and particularly somebody who plays a lot of um, uh, chordal repertoire where you're voicing a lot uh, and or uh, playing things in the lower dynamic range, uh, having that escapement actually um, gives you a little bit more control. I'm not talking about brand, Roland, Yamaha, Kawhi, whatever. Just actions with escapement versus actions without escapement, I find, give me a greater ability and a greater, my fingers, a greater sense of control when you're right in the lowest dynamic ranges. Other than that, there's literally no difference in the playing experience to me. Um, so one with, one without, but with a grain of salt in terms of the level of importance that you should uh, place on that particular feature. Um, besides that, 
Uh, we've got the the PHA4 action is in this one. This is not the PHA50. Uh, if you go up to the HP704, you get the HP um, or uh, the PHA50. So the PHA4 here has a slightly shorter key stick, not that dissimilar to what is on the Yamaha. Uh, the weighting of this is right in line with an acoustic baby grand. So you're, you know, low 50s in your mid range, you're kind of 53, 54 in the bottom, and you're just under 50 in the very, very top. You have a satin finish, not very textured. There's a little bit of texture, but it's not uh, not as pronounced as what you get on, say, the PHA50 in terms of that faux ivory. Uh, it's a matte finish on the top of the black keys as well as the white keys. In terms of the repetition speed, I think it actually is be better than the PHA-50 from what I have experienced. I play the PHA-4 in a lot of gigging situations, uh, and I really like it in a lot of gigging situations. So just a good sense of weight to it, no matter whether you're playing uh, you know, lightly or, or, uh, or more heavily. Uh, over on the Yamaha, the immediate sense is that it's a slightly shallower action. There just feels like there's sort of less travel in the white keys and you reach the bottom of that key bed uh, more quickly. Now what's always a little hard to tell with actions is how much is your mind doing this versus the actual geometry. Because as we talked about, it's a slightly more compressed dynamic range, that could be contributing to the sense that there's not as much depth to the key. Uh, the black key is definitely more textured. I like the, the fact that there's a bit of texture on that black key. I wouldn't say that the PHA4 black key has ever really annoyed me with the fact that it doesn't have any specific texture because there's a lot of black keys on both digitals and acoustics that don't. I just, when it's there, it's kind of nice. It does, um, yeah, it's just a little more comfortable and, uh, and uh, it, it grounds your sense of place uh, uh, with your fingers on the black key when there's just a little more texture there. So that I like. From a repetition standpoint, I don't really perceive uh, there to be any advantage or disadvantage between this or the Roland. They both seem uh, to be quite snappy. So that is our quick comparison on the action. We're going to be back for one last uh, short section where we're going to talk about the other features about these instruments that we haven't covered yet. Thanks so much for sticking with us. So our last section, we'd like to th cover things like connectivity and recording and other features. So we're just going to dive right in with that. The Roland has both Bluetooth audio as well as Bluetooth MIDI connectivity. 
the Yamaha offers wired connectivity, so they have not made the leap into the Bluetooth world uh, yet. I'm sure that's going to happen. It's virtually an entire industry that is moving that direction. There are already some Yamahas out there that offer this, so I expect that at some point, the YDP series may bring this to bear, but right now, they currently don't. So you've got this difference between wired versus wireless connectivity. They both have apps that come free, uh, that allow you to do a lot of remote controlling on these uh, two instruments and allow you to connect to third-party apps as well. So uh, regardless of which one of these you wind up with, I'd encourage you to uh, either get the cable or get you know familiar with how to uh, have those linkages because it really extends your experience to be able to use these with other apps. It's a ton of fun. A lot of the apps that you can get are free or $3 or $5. Totally worth it. Uh, you know, it's a whole other dimension of being able to have fun and experience these instruments. Uh, both of these pianos have discrete uh, quarter inch line outs, uh, which is great um, if you are in any kind of an institutional setting or even your home you might wind up making use of this because it's really fun to pipe this through the home stereo system even if you are still going to be using the local speakers. Uh, they obviously both have uh, headphone jacks. Um, they both have the key covers. They both have basic recording functionality on there. Um, the Roland technically because of the addition of the GM2 sound bank, but uh, even to the core sounds, there's just quite a bit more uh, there to select from. Um, so that's gonna be a factor for some people. It won't be a factor uh, for other people. Uh, and there are some pre-recorded uh, songs that you can play on both of these instruments as, as well. Uh, but by and large, uh, the feature sets are pretty similar. The biggest differences really are the Bluetooth connectivity as well as the number of sounds available on the two instruments. Both Yamaha and Roland offer these in a number of finishes. Uh, and as far as I know, they both also come with a bench included. And last but probably not least, because I know for certain buyers this is an important factor, the Roland has the controls spread out uh, in front and makes use of a central, uh, small central display, uh, whereas the Yamaha has the controls pushed off to the side um, and they have a side uh, control panel uh, kind of somewhat similar to what you'd find on like a CN39 or a DG30 from uh, Kawhi, if people out there are already familiar with what that looks like. Uh, it's not totally dissimilar what you're gonna get on the YDP 184. I hope you've enjoyed this comparison and review of the YDP-184 and the HP-702. If it's the first time that you have seen us here on YouTube, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you as a part of our viewing community. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Marion Pianos on YouTube, and we'll see you again soon.